things? I gave you a problem, screwed it up so you could, and you never caught it. <laughs> All right, so when you did this, it was 0 0.04, and it divided it by 0 0.05, and your answer is going to come out to be 0 0.8 mils, because that's what we're looking for here. That's my answer. And what kind of syringe would we use for that dosage? Tuberculin. thank you. Tuberculin. Yes, and I sent that subcutaneous, that could be tuberculin one mil, syringe around. Yeah. Okay. Number, All right. what are we Number on 15. Okay. The physician orders heparin 25,000 units subcutaneous every 12 hours for your patient with the jejunostomy. That's a feed. That is a tube in the jejun. You have heparin 5,000 units per mil available. How many milliliters will you get? 0 0.5. Uh -huh. Okay, and the only thing I'm going to do here is show you how it sets up. <clears throat> so, I already know that it comes as 5,000 units. mil and the doctor wants 2,500 units in X mil. Guess what? We've done tablets, we've done liquids for injections. 85% of your math for nursing is just using that kind of stuff. 80, 85%. <laughs> remember that what, here's what the hint was. Whatever this is, regardless whether it's units, micrograms, milligrams, always make sure that what you put over here matches. If it doesn't match, you have to do the conversion. None of you caught the conversion. And that's why you got that funky answer. <laughs> and there's a good thing. You said you were trusting her. What if your partner doesn't know how to do math, the person you're trusting? So, you know, I mean, even at the hospital, even at the hospital, you don't trust somebody else's math. Do it yourself. If math needs to be done, What you both do it need yourself. to do is do your own math and yeah. compare. And if you come up with a different answer, figure out which one's right. Because you can easily confuse the other one if you're doing it together. Mm -hmm. And I have many a night on night shift had to sit and do math because the pharmacist isn't there and, you know, it's just you and whatever nurses are working. So Now, once in a while, you may have a pharmacist on call up to a certain time of night, then they're not going to answer you. Like on the hospital I work at on the weekends, that pharmacist is, unless it's an emergency, they're not going to answer you after 12 o'clock at night, 11, 12 at night. So guess what? You gotta know your math. And if you don't, you better get somebody that is good at math. And who do you trust? That's why you need to know who you're working with, if they're trustworthy and if they can do math. And you should be able to figure out how to do this yourself. That's the trick right there. All right, now we're gonna look at number 16. Am I right? All right, this one is tablets. <laughs> The physician orders Tegretol, 0 0.2 grams PO three times a day for Mr. Pine's epilepsy. 
How many tablets will the nurse administer per dose? It comes supplied as 100 milligrams. There's a problem right now, isn't there? You have to change what to what? Grams, so basically one gram is equal to how many milligrams? A thousand. Alright, if you know that, then you can plug in 0 0.2 grams is to how many X milligrams. Am I right? know that one gram equals 1,000 milligrams and that we want to give 0 0.2 grams is equal to X milligrams. So we know that X equals 0 0.2 times 1,000 so X equals 200 milligrams. Now we don't have the problem yet, do we? Now we know that it comes in what kind of milligram tablets? 100 milligrams is to one tablet as is 200 milligrams is to X tab. Oh, I don't like me writing there. Let me move it over. Move that part over. How many tablets you come out with? I didn't put my little hats and stuff on, but there's your math. Quick and easy. Real painless. Okay. Your patient on number 17 has a partial craniotomy, has c chlor sus suspension, 250 PO, four times a day, order. <coughs> How many milliliters will you administer per dose? Now, it comes in what kind of supplies? What does your label say? Oral suspension. Huh? Comes in a suspension? Okay, but what kind of suspension? What kind of concentration or strength? 125 milligrams per 5 milliliters. Okay, so we know it's 125 milligrams per 5 mil, right? Mm -hmm. And the doctor ordered what? Milligrams. And we don't know how much liquid mil, right? Alright, what's your math there? After a while, you get to doing these in your head because if you set them up this way, it's easy to do it in your head. Eventually, I got 10 milliliters. That's what I got here. 10 mils. Yes. 10 mils. Now, guess what? To this problem, there's two steps. Not only did you put 10 mils there, but you notice I have a little measuring cup. You have to draw a line through that two teaspoons, 10 mils, to show me that you know where to put it on the cup. And you'll probably have some of those on your test. And 
just because I had cups that came over with me from the Ark Ages, I'm going to give y'all a cup. What I like about these little cups, they're kind of handy. You know, you get them from different things. But these, what I like about these little cups is these cups literally show you mils to cc. It shows you tablespoons to ounces, <coughs> grams to ounces. You don't see that very often on medicine cups in the hospital. No. Just come no. over in the Ark Ages. Had all of it on there for you. To help you from making a mistake. Uh, you can keep one. If you get it, you keep it. If you don't want it, okay, pass it on. That's all I can say. And I can guarantee you, if you go to the hospital, you won't find a cup that has everything on it like you see it. What did you say, DSSP? The what? DSSP. Oh, that is called um, DECA, and all it represents is that you are giving this person um, two teaspoons or ten milliliters, two drams, one fourth ounce. See how neat that is? It's kind of full. Have some extra. Thank you. Everybody got one? Mm -hmm. That's when a good I little thing to, to make, study for your test. When I try to you, uh, study, when I try to do math with students, and they look at me like I have 20 heads, so I try to bring this kind of stuff syringes. And even when I do ID calculations, I like to use the bags, the tubing, so it makes more sense. Then it makes the math click. Uh, I didn't go get the tubing for this though. Um, what I'm going to tell you, and I think I can probably draw it, there are different tubing. This is uh, whatever the next question, what is it, 18, 19, 18, okay. You have, in most hospitals, they try to stick with two basic IV to tubings. And what I mean is one is what they call a mini drip. Mini drip is always 60 mil, you know, that you have 60 drops, baby drops, is equal to one mil. Most of these may or may not have in their drip chamber on the tubing, when it comes down, it may have a little needle right here in the middle, and it's gonna drip little baby drops. We looked at that yesterday in the book, and, you're, and it was the micro drips. That's and it was called the, the micro. Beep, 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 beep. And, it's, and in other words, it takes 60 baby drops to equal one mil. Then the hospital is going to, and you know who these are used for? Babies, infants, older people, um, critical drips like, you know, some critical drips in, in uh, CCU has to have these kind of micro drips sometimes to get it small enough because the medicine don't need a lot. Uh, somebody that don't need a lot of fluid might have something like this. Now, if you needed to give somebody what we call a fluid bolus, a fluid bolus is uh, where you're going to run the bag in real quick. You would never use this kind of tubing because it's not going to drip very fast. Not fast enough like it would through a macro drip. So this one is called micro drip. And the abbreviation for drips is GTT. Okay? Now, if it's a regular tubing, the drops are going to be a lot bigger problem is, depending on what you have to look on the package of the IV tubing to see what it will tell you is drops per mil. There are different companies will have 10 drops equal 1 mil, or they may have 20 drops equal 1 mil, or they may have 15 drops equal 1 mil. Could you see how confusing that would be in a hospital? That's why a hospital will only order micro drops and macro drop, one of them. They will go with one company and use whatever their drop tubing is for macro drops. So with this next problem down here, 
You notice after total hip replacement, a patient has an order for Toradol 60 milligrams IV piggyback. That's what that represents, piggyback. A piggyback is a little partial filled bag of fluid that you're giving them maybe pain medicine, you might be giving them antibiotics. Have you ever seen the little bags in the hospital that hangs higher than the big bag? Well, that's an IV piggy bag, okay? Um, and you give it over 15 minutes. The Toradol is diluted in a 25 milliliters of D5W. That means it's a little partial filled bag of 25 milliliters. That's all that's in that bag. So we're putting 60 milligrams in a 25 milliliter bag of Toradol. The tubing drop factor is 15 drops per mil. Now why is that important to know? Because when you want to figure out the rate that the doctor wants them to have per drops per minute, you've got to know what the drop of the tubing is. Drop rate, you know, the drops per minute is, per mil is. I'll get it out right in a minute. So in this case, we know that we put that 60 milligrams of Toradol in a 25 milliliter bag, right? How many minutes did the doctor want that 25 milliliter bag to go? 15. <coughs> All right, so we know they want 25 mils and they want it to go in 15 minutes. Well, most of our tubings will tell you that in this case, it's how many drop, our drop factor is what? Over mil, right? Guess what? That cancels this, that cancels that, does it not? Here's your math to figure out what rate you're going to give it in drops per minute. So figure your math, or in, and actually what it comes out to. Somebody trying to explode. <laughs> What'd y'all get? So we know the answer won't be milliliters because they canceled each other out. We know we're going to have drops per minute. So we know that part of my answer is going to be drops per minute. 375? It's 25. this cancel itself out? Yeah. So my answer here was an easy one. It was a give me. <coughs> Just like I canceled the mills out, I canceled this because 15 and goes into 15, 1, 1, right? So if I multiply 25 by 1 and 1 by nothing, I'm going to come out with 25 drops per minute because the minutes here was under, so that's why it's going to be drops per minute. So in other words, you know those drops in that tubing here that's dripping? I'm going to be counting on my watch to see how many drops I have and try to regulate this with, and there's like a roller clamp down here, and you kind of roll it and take your thumb off of it because the longer you leave your thumb setting on it's going to affect the drop drops. So I adjust it, I count it, see if it's 25. If it's not, I adjust it some more until I get 25 drops per minute. Now, there's no such thing as a fraction of a drop. There's no such thing. So if you had 83.3 drops, you better make it 83 drops you're going to do per minute. Or in this case, let's say it was 25.4 drops. You're going to make it 25 drops because there's no such thing as a fraction of a drop. It's either a drop or it's not. 
and you guys will do this if you're in a facility that doesn't have a pump. Mm -hmm. And several facilities, long-term care, you might not have a, a pump for every patient. So that's where you would do these drops. In a minute. hospital, they do pretty good to put them on a pump, and the pumps will pump it in. It, what it does is the pumps are designed to count drops per minute, but give you meals per hour. But you have to know how to set it up. The next one is drops also. So why don't you take the next one? A patient with peptic ulcer has an order for Pepsi. Now, it doesn't have nothing to do with the Toradol, other than you need to make sure in that bag, that little piggy bag, this little piggy bag here, <coughs> that you put Toradol 60 in it. But otherwise, that has nothing to do with the drop factor. Now, a patient, and that's why if students have trouble, what do I put down for part of my problem? That's why I'm bringing it up. So a patient with peptic ulcer disease has an order for Pepsi 20, mil 20 milligrams IV piggyback every 12 hours, over 15 minutes. The Pepsi is diluted in 25 milliliters of D5W. The tubing drop factor in this case changed to 20 drops per mil, didn't it? All right, how many drops per minute should be given? 33. Huh? 33. 33. Yep. And guess what? This is one of those that goes 33.33333. This is where you don't have a fraction of a drop, so you just say 33 drops. So give or take, in an hour, you're going to about just almost have all your solution in the way it's supposed to be. So how you would have set this up, you would have just had your 25 milliliters. It came in uh, D5W, right? And we put our 15 minutes over here. And this time, it's now 20 drops per mil. Whoa. So I'm going to cancel this, cancel that. I don't know where this big circle, I guess my jacket touched it. So. I could either reduce down or whatever, or I can multiply my 25 times 20, and that, that would have come up with the number over 15. Or I could reduce down, whatever. But it's the, ultimately, the answer is going to be this. And when you're looking at these questions, that's one of the things you know, some students will only look at, like she said, the Toradol or the Pepsi 20 milligrams, and they think, oh, that's not what the question's answer asking. What's the question asking? It's asking the drops per minute. So you could cross that out if you want to and just so look at the numbers. Yeah, just look at the numbers of the diluted in 25 milliliters and the 20 drops per minute. That's all you care about. So if that helps you, cross that off on that question and look at what's the question really asking. The only time that Pepsi 20 is valid is when you're actually pulling out the partial field bag of 25 milliliters and you go into an Omni cell or whatever and you get your 20 milligrams of Pepsi, draw it up in a syringe, it's probably going to be 20 milligrams per one mil, draw it up, clean the end of your little bag here, clean it, and inject that pepsin in here. But otherwise, it doesn't apply. Does not. That's not what it's asking you. It's asking you how fast to run that tubing, run that solution to get it in the time frame the doctor wants. Now, let me show you something. Take this same problem, only we're going to, instead of saying it needs to run over 15 minutes, let's change the time to 60 minutes. Everything else is the same, but you need to change your time to 60 minutes. So in other words, this part here is the only thing that's changing. Now what is my answer going to be? Eight. So you're running it awful darn slow, right? Here's another way I could have done it. Oh, it would have been three. 
it still have been like 8.3. Yeah, so I have to drop that fraction. So it's going to be 8 drops <coughs> per minute. That's a big difference, isn't it? It's a lot easier to count that too <laughs> than trying to count 33 drops in a whole minute without looking. So now let's take the same thing and change it here and let's say this is 30 minutes. So what are you coming up with? I think it's 16. 16.6, so 17. So it'd be 17 drops when it goes 0.5, round up. I didn't do that. I just um, took the 8 for the 60 minutes and um, doubled it. You could you have. Have to do but, but in order to be exact, you probably will find it 16.6 something, 666. So you had to round it up to 17 drops. So it would have been not quite right. And you know, that's another way to look at it. If I wanted to make that 45 minutes, what are you going to come out with? Doing it exact and not totally. You're going to get close, but it's not going to be total. 11.1. Do you see how that really changes? I like doing a problem like this because you can really see how it can affect, right? All right, let me do one more thing. Let's leave my minutes as 15. And the mills is 25. But we did a, we did a uh, 15. We also did a 20, right? 20 minute? No, 20 drop two, 20 drop two. There are tubings that become 15 drops. Now what are you getting? 25. 25, because guess what? This cancels, this cancels, you got 25 drops. See how that works? But how come you have to know? I love them. I love math. <laughs> okay. But it's so critical because guess what? If I don't do the right tubing, you could see how much I could be off on my drip. And I could really hurt somebody, especially if it was a medicine like vancomycin or tobramycin or some of those that are very nephrotoxic to the kidney. You know, nephro standing kidney, so it's very toxic to the kidney. All right, next one. We have 3,000 mils of lactated ringer to infuse in 12 hours. Our IV set with drop factor is 15 drops per mil. All right, how many drops per minute do we want, you know, is this gonna drop? Yeah. I have 63. 63. It's actually 62.5, but you have to round it up when it drops. Now, let me make sure I make myself clear. If it's milliliters per hour that you're looking for, you can do a fraction. Pumps can be set to run at, say, if this was mils, we could have said. 62.5 on a pump and been exact <coughs> but you can't do drops because drops are whole drops that makes sense so it's 63 does anybody need to see that math yeah. all right so we have 3,000 And we run it to run in 12 hours. Now, what have I got to do with these hours? You have to change this to minutes, do you not? This has to be changed. So that's going to be 60 times 12, isn't it? 60 minutes in an hour? Okay. So how many minutes was that? 720. All right. Times... 
15 drops over milk. These cancel. So when you do your math across, now, by the way, when you change this to minutes, you can do away with that. We don't want to use both. And so this is going to give me 63. 63 or 60, you know, and so we have to go drops per minute. <coughs> now, what if I wanted that in hours? What if I just want to take 3,000 milliliters and I want it to run in, say, 10 hours, but I, and I don't give you a drop factor. I want it in mils per hour. You only have two numbers to work with, don't you? So you take the 10 into 3,000, wouldn't you? What are you going to get? So I'd be given 300 mils an hour, wouldn't I? So I think what's confusing me is it says it's 15 GTPS per minute. Uh, that should have been scratched out and put ML there. Okay. If it's wrote minute, it's a uh, typo error. It should be mil. Okay, yeah, that's where I'm looking at. Okay. It's mil. Yeah. Sorry, I'll if it's I, it was scratched on mine, but I guess I didn't get it scratched on yours. Because I realized that was a mistake, so that's my fault. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad they cleared up the mystery. All right, 21. Let's look at that real quick. You know, I don't know if I'm going to get to this other. <laughs> okay. Um, Benadryl 25 IV every six hours for a child that weighs 50 pounds. You have Benadryl 12.5 milligrams per milliliter. The recommended daily dosage for a child weighing more than 12 kilograms is 5 milligrams per kilogram for 24 hours in four divided doses. That's a mouthful, and you're going to have to use a few of these things. <coughs> a child's weight is how many kilograms? If you take the 50 pounds, what's that change to in kilograms? Okay, so it's 22.7. Does everybody agree with that? Okay, so fill the first line out. That's A. 